Okay, so this game was important for a couple of reasons. I think a lot of reasons. I mean, it's a memorable game. It's still a good game today. It's a great game. The level of um, imagination uh, involved in this was unbelievable. You are really sent to like another world when you play this game. At least it, I was back then when I played it and I was like nine years old. So it was uh, one of the first CD-ROM games. Um, and that was the, uh, something special the design, the whole design because basically CD-ROM games, you know, were exact, were allowing computers to all of a sudden, uh, put extremely, uh, large file sizes, uh, into their, into the games. Um, people are able to put extremely large file sizes into the games. So basically, um, you know, videos were able to be played in in games, and really high detailed photographs were able to be showed uh, in games or in anything you know that was that was you know sold on a CD-ROM. Uh, it was basically like a way of putting extremely, uh, you no, know, just a lot of information uh, into into one thing. Um, you know, before that, there was just floppy disks, and those didn't like have very much space at all. Um, so, you know, Myst was w one of the first games to really popularize the idea of making a game for CD-ROM, uh, and it was is uh, one of the funnest parts of what we did. It was an incredibly Myst good-looking game because, um, right up because of that. The beginning, we um, had to. Uh, and the sound was incredibly high quality um, for compared to any other game as well. All the worlds, all the uh, everything involved with it, sitting down and uh, and going over puzzles and whether or not they'd be too hard or too easy and uh, and whether or not they fit with the story because there was so much uh, story that was being developed at the same time. Right. So these are the two brothers, uh, Robin and Rand Miller. We extend the gameplay by by having just the depth, um, the depth in the uh, in the amount of places to explore. These two guys so made this whole game. That you just felt like it was going on forever, and so we just go back and forth and back and forth, and you wouldn't believe some of the stupid ideas that we end up Robin ends up <laughs> coming up with. <laughs> Miss Island. Ha <laughs> ha. This is where we film. Look at that blue screen. Blue screen. It's a very low budget setup. <laughs> ah, the graphics. I've <laughs> been very much into the detail of things, the richness of things, and so. When we did Mist, we wanted it to be a very rich environment and a very detailed environment. And graphically, uh, that meant a lot of work. We are using a computer, in essence, to build sets. Um, the stuff that we're doing for Mist, basically, has to be fully realized in order to move a... Just listen to that music. That's music from the game. It was written by one of the brothers, uh, Robin Miller who has only put out a couple albums, uh, but his music is fantastic. And he's only done soundtracks for, he's done the soundtracks for Mist, the soundtrack for uh, for Riven, the sequel to Mist, um, and then also the um, soundtrack to his latest movie. He did a recent independent film, and he did the soundtrack to that. It's also fantastic. I wish this guy would do more music. Um, it's it's really. I mean, just listen to that. Little gold handles in the front, and it has a carving in the the front of the wood or inlaid wood at this part. We would build an incredible amount of detail into our models. Um, it was a time-consuming process. Uh, it meant that we would include everything up to the tiniest little screw or nail.